Getting the most lap time out of any car can be challenging. And we're here with Johnny Reid who's racing the International Motorsport Audi R8 in the South Island Endurance Championship. And with this championship, basically a pro driver like Johnny is paired with a gentleman driver. So part of the challenge is getting the gentleman driver's lap times down to the same sort of range as the pro driver. Now Johnny, just wanted to get a little bit of insight in this and for our audience who are watching, maybe not knowing your background, uh, you're no stranger to fast cars, uh, racing in A1GP back in the day and winning several rounds there. So fair to say you've got a, a fairly uh, long standing history in motorsport. I just want to talk about the process you go through to try and improve lap times with your gentleman driver. So can we start with getting to a, to a fresh racetrack, rolling the car out of the transporter. What's the process you sort of go through? Yeah, so the first thing we will do is uh, walk the circuit um, with the engineers and basically um, we look for all the details on the circuit, anything that's changed from the previous time myself or, or the team have been to this, the circuit or uh, the gentleman driver has been to the circuit as well and we can just talk those through how that might affect the weekend whether it's uh, something that might damage a tyre all the way through surface changes um, and curb heights and things like that so um, yeah all of that uh, we we then digest and um, we, we also talk about braking markers on the track and just to get everyone thinking about it and, and that's generally go home have a meal relax come back the next morning start running we would have, um, before we do the uh, track walk, we would have prepped with watching the videos from the previous years on our qualifying laps, um, or uh, even some cases of race laps, just to understand the, the start procedures and, and, and all, those, uh, all those things that you um, get a bit nervous about sitting on the grid, um, and just try and calm it down. I think the key, the key to uh, being successful um, in, in training is uh, really, Bringing, bringing the driver along with you on, on the journey and instilling confidence into them overall. Um, and there's many ways we do that as, as we move through the weekend. Once we start running on, on track, um, generally uh, myself, I would go out first um, and set a reasonable datum lap. And then um, from there, I would uh, follow that through with um, Neil jumping in the car or, or, or whoever I'm working with at the time, and they would uh, flow on through uh, and, and try and work towards uh, their best lap. Then what we do is overlay them on the speed traces. Let's just come back a little bit for a start. So just off camera before we were talking about the process and you also mentioned about uh, the importance of actually having the car in the performance envelope for a particular track uh, before. Obviously if it's a complete dog, uh, it's yeah, going to be difficult right. for anyone to, to get uh, good results, good lap times right. out of it. So. I mean, obviously you've got experience with the cars being to these tracks, so you've got sort of some historical data. So yep. is that where you start with a, a yes, setup that you know should be on point? Yeah, look, so uh, personally I always like to work closely with the engineers, chassis engineers, data engineers. Um, so you're quite right. In that sense, the first thing that I would be doing while setting a lap time is feeling the balance of the car. If there's any changes, we would obviously iron that out. Um, because the cars are aerodynamically driven that we're, we're currently driving, the Audi R8 Le Mans series. And um, if you were out of the window and you throw your driver in, there's quite a lot of risk with that, right? Um, or, or in particular, if there's, there's two um, more amateur-based drivers with very little experience driving the cars together, um, they, they really need someone assisting them on a test day prior. So um, that's the sort of thinking uh, that I would be taking into any, uh, any race meeting. Um, from, from there then we start diving in and, and setting those lap times and overlaying um, and really, as I said, trying to bring the, the co-driver along with you um, to uh, bring them up to the level as much as you can and you know, there'll, there'll be high risk places on, on the circuit as well and as a driver you're always thinking about where is the easier time for them to get comfortable with. Um, so like if there's walls on the outside of the track or uh, high risk areas, high speed corners, what, whatever it may be, uh, maybe focus on the more basic things like braking and... Um, and find, find the safer place, places to pick up the time rather than risking putting the car into a wall? Correct. Now you've talked about a reference time, so what we're talking about here is uh, the data analysis package actually getting uh, a reference lap time that can be the, then used as an overlay with your gentleman driver. So this then allows the data engineers and yourself to go through that data and see exactly where the breaking points are between your reference lap and the gentleman drivers. Yep. So you go and like pick out a few key areas there for the, the driver to then work on? 
Yeah, so, so sort of as I was saying, I just pick out the, the lower risk elements um, and focus on those first. And then uh, generally that's, that comes with braking, but also technique and how they pick up the throttle, how much brake pressure they're using and for how long. Um, all those little elements, uh, they're very crucial in just keeping up uh, momentum and lap time. So. Now the other technology that we've seen, it's definitely not new, but it's become more and more prominent is video based uh, data. And so how important is looking at the video versus the actual data and the likes of uh, a telemetry software? And do some drivers respond better to video versus hard data? Well, what's the difference there? Well, there's probably a good old saying, a picture it says a million words, and that's exactly um, the saying for, for the video. Um, for me, um, I use it all the time in preparation. Um, I also work, work with drivers uh, to assist them in preparation before we get on the track, um, and then we use it throughout. Uh, the data is important, but I think both elements are equally as important. I couldn't put one in front of the other, but the uh, sometimes when it's a complex section of the track, or you need to know where the car's positioned on the track, that's where the data, uh, sorry, the video becomes. Uh, very important. So, so driving line as opposed to just some lines on uh, some telemetry? Correct. Now we've talked about getting the gentleman driver up to speed but of course you still need to push as well and when you're the faster of the two drivers you don't have the benefit of a reference lap time to see where yep. potentially you can push the car harder so uh, what are you using to actually help improve your own performance? Yeah it's a good question and um, I mean I'm very motivated anyway so I'm very driven to push the boundaries in a race car but um, when it comes to uh, competition and, and on track racing, um, the beautiful thing about running in the series that we do, um, I'm actually able to drive and race alongside a driver and coach them along the way. So that, that is just so much fun for me, but it's also um, really beneficial um, for the car owner. So for, in this case, um, you know, bringing Neil on that journey and just seeing him flourish uh, over the years we've worked together now is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty special. And I guess over time as well, working with the same driver, you do get uh, a certain bond so you understand how to talk to the driver in order to get the performance out of them? Absolutely, yeah. And, and obviously for me, the competition on the track, the other, other top drivers, they push me along. But um, you're, you're, you're absolutely on the money with um, understanding your driver and his personality is crucial because uh, you, you'll have uh, chalk and cheese, you'll have uh, the, the limit push sort of guys and then you'll have the conservative approach um, and it's knowing when to push the conservative and when to pull back the limit push um, and that, that's as simple as I can put it. It's, um, uh, it, it's, it's constant management and confidence building um, is, is really the key. Now we talked a little bit about getting the car in the performance window to, to start with and obviously getting that's key to the performance anyway. Uh, I understand that some drivers like a car that's set up maybe a little bit looser and they can get better lap times out of the car whereas maybe a less experienced driver would find that a little bit daunting and unnerving. So uh, do you make a bit of a compromise in the car setup so that the car is drivable and manageable for the, the second driver? Oh yeah look I mean there's, there's a, the qualifying car and then there's the race car for sure and that's always been um, in whatever top, top series that I've raced in. But um, I, I think you're right, what you've got to remember here is we, we're racing three hour races and, that's, and our goal is to win those. Um, it's not necessarily just to go out there and, and put it on pole. If we can do that and, and set some lap records on the way, that's always a bonus. But it's not, um, it's not the key driver of what we're about in, in this endurance game. So it's a long race and so maybe uh, track position on the start line not quite as critical as getting to the finish line? Well absolutely right, if to finish first, first you must finish, um, very wise words from a wise man but the, um, yeah look, um, at the same time you've got to be up the front to still stay out of the, uh, the confrontation, you don't want to be in the bottleneck on certain circuits, um, you know here at Highlands this weekend we have a, quite a bus stop chicane and it's um, actually quite, quite, quite good to be on the pole if, if you're lucky enough to be there. So. Oh look, thanks for the insight there Johnny and uh, we wish you all the best for the racing tomorrow. Hopefully it all works out and maybe you will get it on pole. Thank you, great chatting. Appreciate it. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.